Who's there? Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo? He. You come most carefully upon your hour. Tis now struck twelve. Give me to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. Have you had a quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho! Who's there? Friends to this ground. And liegemen to the Dane. Give you good night. Oh, farewell, honest soldier. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo has my place. Give you good night. Holla! Bernardo! But say what? Is Horatio there? A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy and will not let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night, that if this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, twill not appear. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story what we have two nights seen. Well, sit we down, and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then tolling one. Most like it harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurps this time of night, together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of fairy Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven, I charge thee, speak. It is offended. See, it stalks away. Stay. Speak, speak, I charge thee, speak. Tis gone, and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is this not something more than fantasy? What think you, aunt? Before my God, I might not this believe without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. Such was the very armor he had on when he, the ambitious Norway, combated. So frowned he once when, in an angry parl, he smote the sledded Polacks on the ice. Tis strange. Thus twice before, and jump at this dead hour, with martial stalk, hath he gone by our watch, in what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bodes some strange eruption to our state. Good, now, sit down and tell me, he that knows, why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land, and why such daily cast of brazen cannon and foreign mart for implements of war why such impress of shipwrights, whose sore task does not divide the Sunday from the week? What might be toward 
that this sweaty haste doth make the night joint labourer with the day. Who isn't that? That can I. At least the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fortinbras of Norway, thereto pricked on by a most amulet pride, dared to the combat, in which our valiant Hamlet, for so this side of our known world esteemed him, did slay this Fortinbras, who by a sealed compact, well ratified by law and heraldry, did forfeit with his life all those his lands which he stood seized of to the conqueror. Against the which a moiety competent was gauged by our king, which had returned to the inheritance of Fortinbras, had he been vanquisher, as by the same covenant and carriage of the article designed, his fell to Hamlet. Now, sir, young mm. Fortinbras, of fun and proven metal hot and full, hath in the skirts of Norway here and there sharped up a list of lawless resolutes hey. for food and diet to some enterprise that hath a stomach in it, which is no other, as it doth well appear unto our state. But to recover of us, by strong hand and terms compulsory, these foresaid lands so by his father lost. And this, I take it, is the main motive of our preparations, the source of this our watch, and the chief head of this post-haste and roamage in the land. I think it be no other, but e'en so. Well, uh... we have sought that this pretentious figure comes on through our watch. So like the king that was, and is, the question of these wars. A moat it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell. The graves stood tenantless, and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets. The stars with trains of fire, dews of blood, disasters in the sun, and the moist star upon whose influence Neptune's empire stands was sick almost to doomsday with eclipse. And this like precursor of fierce events, as harbinger unto the fates and prologue to the omen coming on, have heaven and earth together demonstrated unto our climatures and countrymen. <gasps> but soft, Hold. Lo, where it comes again. I'll cross it, though it blessed me. Stay, illusion. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease and grace to me, speak to me. <laughs> If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which, haply foreknowing, may avoid, oh, speak! Or if thou hast abhorred in thy life extorted treasure in the womb of the earth, for which they say you spirits oft walk in death, speak of it! Stay and speak! Stop it, Marcellus! Shall I strike at it with my partisan? Do, if it will not speak. Tis here. Tis here. Tis gone. We do it wrong, being so majestical, to offer the show of violence. For it is, as the air, invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. Then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. I have heard the cock, that is the trumpet to the morn, doth with his lofty and shrill sounding throat awake the god of day. And at his warning, whether in sea or fire, in earth or air, the extravagant and erring spirit hies to his confine. And of the true theorem, this present object made probation. If faded on the crowing of the cock, 
Some say that ever against the season comes, wherein our Savior's birth is celebrated. The bird of dawning singeth all night long. And then they say, no spirit dare stir abroad. The nights are wholesome, then no planets strike, no fairy takes, nor which have power to charm. So hallowed and so gracious is the time. So have I heard, and do in part believe it. But look. <laughs> what? The morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight and to young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent? Uh, we shall acquaint him with it, as needful in our loves, fitting our duty. Let's do it, I pray. And I this morning know where we will find him most conveniently. <laughs> 